Plainfield, New Jersey, a middle-class city with a strong sense of community. And smack in the middle of town is a soul food restaurant named Blackberries, run by a once successful caterer named Shelly Withers. Hello. The gang's all here, huh? My catering business was fantastic. I had such a tremendous following. It just seemed natural that I would move on to open a restaurant. Hi, how are you? Welcome. And with her mother, Mary, investing her entire retirement fund into the restaurant, Shelly's dream came true. Daddy put the check in the bank this afternoon. Oh, OK. I think it's a parent's responsibility to be supportive of their children. I am so happy with the way the restaurant turned out. The decor is phenomenal. I'm not sure if I understand the reference. And Blackberries has the best soul food in town, no doubt. Fried collard greens is my favorite. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. The shrimp was firm. That's because I forgot I'm on the stove. <laughs> perfect location, perfect food. But where are my customers? The problem is Shelly is in denial. She thinks that the decor is amazing and the food tastes spectacular. I like it. But the food is suffering, the customers are suffering, and the restaurant is suffering. The macaroni actually <laughs> Shelly believes that all of her food is better than any chef out there. Too done? Too done is perfect. She feels this is the way I want it. It tastes good. It doesn't matter what someone else thinks about it. It being my restaurant, I'm going to have it my way. I don't want the food to touch. I say it every day, and okay. you're doing it to me anyway, right? It don't make sense to me. Shelly is a super control freak to the 110th power. I need you to knock these motherfuckers down. Just get it out. What, what, what system are we following here? It's no system. We have 16 people working back here and 16 people doing their own system. Table five right there in the front. Where is it, please? Guys, it's hot back here. Why is everybody back here? Because we ain't got no food out here. She thinks she knows what she's doing when she actually has no idea what she's doing. Tell me what I can do to help. I don't, I don't understand what's going on. And that brings a lot of chaos here. Let me see that plate. She's helping the restaurant to fail even more. Not that many customers, though, huh? Things are bad. I'm $200,000 in debt. I'm barely holding on here. I got $14 to my name. Bro. Like I tell Shelly, it's just not only her if this restaurant fails, because I have sacrificed a lot to make sure that the doors didn't close. I believe in the power of prayer. I think Chef Ramsey is the answer to her prayers. What an amazing, buzzy little town. Great location for restaurants. Hello. Hello. Good How are afternoon. You? Oh, yes. Welcome to Blackberry. Thank you. Very happy to be here. I'm happy um, to have you here. Wow. Look at this place. Somebody having a party? No, no party. We're no. just having um, lunch. OK, great. Let me seat you. OK. I'll sit over here. And this big boy there, who's this that? This is James. I'm James. James. What's your job? General manager. Stop it. With a baby face like that, you can't be yeah, management. Get out of here. <laughs> You look about 18. How old are you? I'm 30 years old. Wow. Amazing. Aging well. And this is? Mom Mary. Mother Mary. Yes, sir. You look great. Nice. Thank what you. do you do? The cakes, the pies, the desserts, really. She's our baker. OK, great. Lord Ramsey is here. I don't want to be sweating all over him. <laughs> Can I kiss him? Can I give him a kiss and thank him for coming or what? Yeah, it's about to be all right with him. Hey, how are you, bud? How Hello. are you? How are you doing, Good to see you. You're running My around. Pleasure. You're busy, yeah. aren't you? I have to be. Huh? Amazing. Somebody's got to get it done. How long have you been here? About oh, three years. Who I designed this place? I feel like Donna Summer's going to come through the door. That would be Michelle. I think that would be me. Oh. I absolutely love the decor. And dance, party, that's me. Wow. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. OK. Well, hello, darling. Look at those beautiful blue eyes. <laughs> I would ask my fiance if I could kiss you. Fiance? He's our manager. The one? Yeah. Oh, come on. Sexy, right? <laughs> You'll get arrested for cradle snatching. Mm, hey, general manager, say. come here. <laughs> you. 
Get that beard over here. You didn't tell me that you're dating the owner. <laughs> we are, Excuse me. We are engaged. <laughs> amazing. And was it love at first bite? Yeah. Wow. Way to a man's okay. heart is a stomach. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. He's a little younger than I am, but he's my sexy chocolate. <laughs> Let me sit down and have a quick look through the menu and start ordering. Thank you. Thank you for coming, Gordon. I'm going to see as much as I can. OK, uh, right, let's go for uh, collard greens. Yes. That smothered pork chop sounds delicious. Let's go for some mac and cheese as well, please. OK. The chitlins. And desserts. How's the bread velvet cake? Delicious. OK, great. Very well, thank you. I'm starving. Okay. We're going to put your order in. Excellent. All right, guys, we have our order for Chef. All right, let's do it. I really think that Chef Ramsay is going to say that the food is phenomenal. With the pork chop, with some mac. This is not hot. Just microwave it. This is the craziest decor I've ever seen. Wow, another record. Yeah, they're all over. So her first name is? Eloise. Eloise, yeah. uh, what's the Oh, Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> What happened? Was it the fried chicken or the cornbread? What, what went? Chitlins? Oh, my what happened? goodness. I have no idea. I've never seen that before. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, my God. Did somebody headbutt the wall? It was shocking to find oh, that it was a hole in the wall with a record on it. I was just like, oh, my God. Like, what the hell is that doing there? I've heard about broken records, but Jesus Christ. OK, let's get out of here quick. <laughs> I, I'm afraid to touch any other records. Alright, here you go. Oh, now you know that is a pretty plate, right? <laughs> Shelly is delusional about how fabulous her food is. I hate the macaroni and cheese. Just looks like crap on a plate. This is pork chop, the smothered pork chop. Thank you. Just like someone shot on my plate. It's just dry. Bland. Nothing seasoned there. How's your pork chop? Yeah, the pork chop is dry. The mac and cheese is way overcooked and very mushy. You think a soul food restaurant would pride itself on cooking mac and cheese, but no, it's just all. Is that heated in the microwave? Though? No, I think they just put it in the, in the oven to warm for our lunch service. Thank you. What's wrong? He's saying that the macaroni and cheese is dry and overcooked. Ooh. He asked me, have we warmed it in the microwave? I told him, no, it just came out of the oven. They may have put it in the microwave for a minute. Only for a minute, though. Everything is cooked to perfection. There is nothing on that menu that is not perfect. OK, here we go. I'm taking over now. Five collard greens. Move it to the middle. Put an orange chip in the middle. That's it. How can you actually say this is a social restaurant? Or the collard greens are not tasting like collard greens, since they just like pepper soil. You know, you can't have food tasting like that. Tell Chef I said to taste those collard greens. They're perfect. Here you go, Chef. Collard greens. Wow. Yes. OK, great. Thank you very much indeed. Wow. It's bland and no seasoning. It's just fried and soggy and limp. Uh, James, what do you think? You got to eat it all together. If you eat it all together, mm -hmm. it should. Well, I did eat it all together, but it still stayed bland. Thank you. Yeah. My God. What is he saying about our stuff now? A little bland. Oh, my God. <laughs> Collard greens. It's great. He's crazy. Where's the chitlins at? It's in the microwave. They're delicious. If we get one out of three, we might be all right. And this is the chitlins and okra. OK. Chitlets. I mean, I know chitlets are the intestine, but should they really stink? Before I do taste them, I'd like to pray to God before I put any of that in my mouth. <laughs> in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, you are blessed. <laughs> we rebuke the spirit of the devil. Yeah. You are prayed over. We guarantee you that you are not about to succumb to those chitlins. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you. In Jesus' name. <laughs> You'll be fine. <laughs> I just had to pray over Chef before he ate the chitlins. What the fuck? It's 
no prayers going to save me on this one. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, chitlets, shitlets. I need the toilet, excuse me. I knew they'd come out quicker than they went in. Chef Ramsay is a mess. Oh, those chitlets are gross. Look at that, I'm throwing up. Holy crap. <laughs> are you kidding me? Oh, my God. Oh, they stink. Oh. <laughs> Shall it be taking it? Lightly and not seriously at all. Is he in the children's bathroom? I'm not sure, but I guess the prayer didn't work. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. He's not used to that soul food, huh? <laughs> Thank you. I want to see what's going on. Oh, Jesus. <sighs> so we've got the. Red velvet. Red velvet. Mom Mary makes all of our desserts. Mom Mary. Yes. Wow. Thank you, babe. You're welcome. Mm. Wow. That is delicious. Finally. Some good fucking food. Wow. How do you like this? Yeah, it's delicious. Well done. Wow. I had to wait to the end. I've been saved by Mother Mary. Of course, the red velvet that mommy makes is going to be beautiful, right? Because mommy made it. I'm going to punch him in the face. You watch this thing. Just show me into the kitchen, please. Yes, Thank you. I sure will. Yep. The chef is on his way back. I'm scared. I would, I would, I'm scared to bring him here. Shelly doesn't listen. When Ramsey gets back there in the kitchen, we'll see if she even opens up to any suggestions or not. Hi, how are you? How are you? Nice to meet you. Mateen. Mateen, good yes, to see you, buddy. Good to see you, too. Likewise. Portia. How Hello, are you? Chef. Pleasure. And this is Tyrone. Oh, Tyrone. Nice to meet you. Likewise, good to see you, buddy. Uh, so, I've just had an embarrassing lunch. Let's start from the top. Pork chop, dry, bland, no seasoning. And the macaroni cheese was an embarrassment. The fried collard greens, there's no seasoning. Everything's just fried, so it just tasted of oil. And horrible. The chitlins, but the smell of them almost made me want to gag. Do not believe that there's that much wrong with my food. Who is the head chef here? I am. Show me tonight. OK. Well, you think you are the head chef. All right. As Shelly and the staff prepare for dinner service. Woo! The food is good up, you know, to my standards. <laughs> chef Ramsay returns and is greeted by an unexpected guest. Oh, what is that? Bloody hell. Damn. Oh, my God. Wow. It's just 10 minutes before the doors to Blackberry's open, and Chef Ramsay is greeted by something unexpected. Bloody hell. That. Have you got a bin? Yes, Chef. The moves? Just by the front door. Huh? I, it's by the door. No. We just had the exterminator. You paid for the exterminator? Sure. Get your money back. OK, that's not funny. I've got an incinerator outside. Can you take that? No? As a general manager, do something with it. The mouse. The mouse? It was in the entrance as I walked in on the left-hand side. Mouse? We always have the exterminator once a month oh, for no. prevention. Are you serious? No fucking way. Uh, mouse? Come on. At the front door, not even in the kitchen. No. Hey guys, be careful of mice. Can you show me where you found that at? It was at the front door. Like where? Oh, well, where's the front door in your mind? I can't believe that. I came in the door, walked in there, saw him. Bang, right there. Right here. Do you have it on film? Are you kidding me? What, you thought I brought it in out of my pocket? Yeah, I think you did. Are you, are you, are you fucking dreaming? I arrived, the never, mouse was there. Never, never, never here, never. There was no, no, never no mouse right here. Right, OK. Absurd. So we had the exterminator last week. They come on regular occasions. Yes. We right. have an issue with mice. That's why you have an exterminator. We, we don't have an issue with mice. An exterminator comes in 
Okay. Regular. Just... Let's let's you and I do a little investigation. Let's go. Dwayne, when was the last time you spotted a mouse in here? I, I've never seen one. You've never seen one. No. Good. Except that one that was under the steam table that was dead a few months back. <laughs> Almost a year back. He found a mouse in the front door. I've never been so embarrassed and humiliated in my life. This is ridiculous. Really ridiculous. And sad. I never seen a mice in here. Perhaps you planted that uh, mouse. And you are suggesting that I brought it in. I was like, hmm, I put it together like just for TV's sake, maybe. I, I wish you would talk a little bit of sense. Fuck the TV. Put your money where your mouth is, in front of your staff. I want a meeting upstairs with you and everybody now. Yes. Pulling mice out of his pockets and stuff. You got to chase your responsibilities for something, man. How you going to help us if everybody keep bullshitting, man? A mouse in the front of the hallway? It's mice infested all over this place. It can happen. It can happen. Shelly? Huh? Can I have a two seconds, please? Okay. Uh, all, all of you. This is very, very important. So. Huh? I was telling I seen him like almost like plant that uh vermin. Mm -hmm. So just look at James for me, two seconds. I walked in the front door, a mouse. The mouse that you planted, I know. They told me. But it's okay. No, it's not it's okay. A show. It's got nothing to do with TV, nothing to do with your business in the shit. I am not gonna stand there and even attempt to take that crap from you. You can take your restaurant and stick it. I am gone. I'm out of it. You're out of here. I'm out of here. Excuse me. Go. See you later. Shut it down. Let's go. It's over. After discovering a mouse in the restaurant... Do you have it on film? ...and being accused of planting it... The mouse that you planted, I know. Chef Ramsay has had enough. Take your restaurant and stick it. I'm gone. You out of here, I'm out of here. Excuse me, go. See you later. Shut it down. Let's go. It's over. It is not over. Could you please shut up? I mean, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I have worked tremendously trying to support my child, and I don't understand. You know, it's, I, I don't understand what's happening today. Honest to God, I don't. Please don't leave. Yeah, no, I'm out of here. Please don't Because you're leave. exaggerating. Can I talk to you? Can I talk to you? Just yep. me and you? Yep. I, I take back what I said as far as you doing something like that. I don't want to defame your character, but it just was, I'm lost for words that that happened and it, it just, it, it just like shocked me and I, I apologize. That's the most sensible thing I've heard you say since I've been here. Thank you. Sure. The combination of Mother Mary's plea and an apology by James are enough to keep Chef Ramsay at Blackberries. Welcome to Blackberries. At least for now. Yes, sir. This evening will be Tina. She'll be right with you. The grandma's original fresh chicken. Okay. Southern style fresh And I'm going to get uh, macaroni and cheese. All right, ladies. Let me put these orders in. First order, shrimp and grits. Would we'll probably be a shrimp and grit night. Am I seeing right? You've got a, a free burner wok there. Is that a pizza oven? Yes, that's my pizza oven. And the wok. Okay. I love it, Chef. Shelly, how can you cook soul food in a wok? Watch me, Chef. Watch me. Soul food is supposed to be cooked slowly. Soul is supposed to be cooked with love and soul, not in a wok. Shelly's cooking green beans in a wok, cooking rice in a wok, cabbage in a wok. We're not a Chinese soul food restaurant. We don't need a wok, OK? That's the first of me, a southern food restaurant with a Chinese wok and a pizza oven. And you have an oven that doesn't work right there. Tell me what's working, apart from you. Uh, <laughs> 
We haven't had correct working ovens. We don't have the correct stoves, the correct fryers, grills. You know, how can we produce really great food if we don't have really great ovens? How do you manage to fry everything in one fry like that? Very hard. A lot of prayer. After discovering unusual and dysfunctional equipment in this soul food restaurant, Chef Ramsay turns his attention to Shelly and how she runs her kitchen. Fried chicken, please. How many white meats do you need? Fried chicken, Mateen. Well, I'm going to call the artist. You can't call Honey, the artist. do again. your ticket. I'm do doing this. It. Let's get one thing straight. OK. Can you please work on ticket one? We are. Are we? I mean, I don't understand what you're okay, doing. You're um, walking in a damn circle. Shelly has no concept of what it means to actually run a proper, functional kitchen. Portia, one ticket at a time I need you to do Shelly, for me. that's I, what I'm, I'm doing. OK, just one. Just do one. That's, what, that's how I do one. Just make it and send it. That's it. Make it and send it. Unbelievable. And where's the control, the chef, the, the system? What, what system are we time. following here? It's like there's no system. I mean, this is a joke. If you try to get one, she wants to argue you down. You know, she wants to argue you down and make it seem like you're the one that's wrong, or it can't be run like that. But it's not making or it's, sense. Or it's too Look incompetent. Look right down there. Look down there. Look. It's like, you one, know, two, three. Six of them down there. I want you guys off the line. Just go. Watch out. Just back up. It's getting ridiculous already. It's been an hour and a half. I actually just kind of want to get up and move. How long have you been waiting, Dwayne? Close to an hour. An hour. It's my first time in here, and it's just dysfunctional. There doesn't seem to be one person controlling it. I have the recipe. I'm the exact. Oh, my Shit. god! Shelly thinks she knows what she's doing when she actually has no idea what she's doing. We need a miracle, a prayer, hands on bending knees, because this is going to the shits. Here we go, fried chicken. Despite the ongoing chaos in the kitchen, dishes somehow make their way to the dining room. And that's the result. You wait 90 minutes, and this is what you're lucky to get. Oh, my God. It's crazy in there. Huh? Huh? That is crazy in there. Always. In yes. there's a war zone. Always. Huh? Always. Welcome to Blackberry. Step Ramsey. That's it, hell. What a welcoming. Coming up, is it her way or the highway? When the staff tries to get through to Shelly. I have been open-minded. She goes from the defensive to the offensive. Calm down. Calm down. I'm not upset. I want you to leave. Tell me to go, I go. And then at dinner service, Blackberry spirals out of control. I don't want to hear it. Leaving Chef Ramsay wondering. Shelly! If this restaurant can be saved. Now you walk away. Bye. Goodbye. 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 See you later. It's day two at Blackberry's. And Chef Ramsay knows that before he can implement changes, he has to focus on how this restaurant is run. And so he starts the day with a staff meeting. I want to go around now to identify things that you know that are wrong with the business and things that you'd like to change in the business. I think um, one thing is I've known Shelly. We kind of grew up together. And she is a control freak. If she does not see it being implemented the same way that she would do it, she's going to jump in and she's going to take over. But is it overbearing? Is it too controlling? Yes. It's either her way or the highway. And it inhibits anyone to show off their skills or what they can do or what they can bring to the restaurant. But you have someone that's down your throat constantly sure. and really doesn't know what they're doing. If you were so right, obviously the restaurant wouldn't be failing or in a situation that is it. No, but it's a very valid point. You've employed some talented individuals. OK. Portia. Shelly needs to learn how to delegate responsibility. She can't be hands-on all the time. It creates a problem. Oh, my god. Shelly, in all honesty, you take somebody out of what they're supposed to be doing and make them do something else. And that's one thing you got to realize, and that happens more often than I not. I think that you talk too much and you know too much. This is and the that attitude. Is part of that's the problem. what makes this so rough. Dwayne, well, be at quiet. One time or another, Dwayne. everybody has been Dwayne. pushed off their position. Dwayne, calm down. I'm not, and I wasn't upset. Dwayne, I tried to tell you something. I'm, I'm asking there. you to calm down. I'm not, I'm not I upset. I want you to leave. Good night. I don't have Thank a problem so with much that. For your service. Because the truth honestly hurts. The truth hurts. Right, we're going to fix that. We're going to fix that. Dwayne, 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 just bear with me for two minutes. Sit down, please. OK? My goodness. What is wrong with you? I made one comment. What's become evident 
is how fragmented we are. But that starts from the top. Chef. Shelly have to learn how to listen. Everybody tries to communicate with her and support her, but if she's gonna be stubborn and not listen, the doors will close. And that would just break my heart, I mean, tremendously. From now on in, open, honest dialogue. Got it? Yes. Shelly? Shelly, I can't hear you. I'm listening. No? We're all I'm in listening. together. Are we going to be open-minded? I have been open-minded, as far as I'm concerned. Why do you say that? This is not a joke. Your livelihood is on the line. I mean, you're in a serious, serious position. There's no reason why you cannot be open and honest, because my I'm 72 years old. Oh, and I thank sense. God that I've been able to live this long. And these are the most important things that I try to project. Listen to what this gentleman has to say. I want to move forward. I'm here to help. Right. And the direction is to you, Shelley, because there's some valuable information that we've just listened to. We know you're the boss. What you haven't got right now is a successful restaurant. And everyone in this room, including me, are here to make that a success. But you have to get out of denial. Agreed? Agreed. I can't hear you. Agreed. Thank you. Only time will tell whether Shelley has really understood what the staff was saying. Come with me. Let's get in the kitchen. Let's get to work. But Chef Ramsay has already implemented a drastic change in the kitchen. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! I called a friend, Kelly Quip. And he arranged for a brand new fryer and a state-of-the-art six-ring burner, an amazing convection oven from South Bend. Incredible. Oh, um, a six-burner stove, Tyrone. I just can't believe. Unbelievable. I've had it done, especially for your baking as well. Oh, oh my God! Yeah. I'm bursting at the seams. Just, I, I just can't believe it. Oh, man, this is awesome. Is the walk gone? There's no way on earth we can start to move forward cooking on a Chinese wok. A wok that you cannot cook soul food on. We can have a proper system here. Where's the wok? <laughs> I am definitely going to miss my wok. But it's just going to be an adjustment for me. Oh, my god. Incredible. I just can't believe this. Happy Mary? Father God, I just can't. Thank you enough. I'm glad you're happy. Oh, this is just so wonderful. This is truly, truly a blessing. Chef Ramsay is, he's unbelievable. I truly believe in the power of prayer. I prayed so hard that you would come and that you were going to turn this restaurant around. I'm just so overwhelmed. I thank you so much. Now that the kitchen has functional equipment. OK, there's one thing that's missing here. That's the structure. What, what system are we following here? We're going to work as a team. Chef Ramsay appoints a leader. Tomorrow night, my team. Yes. I want you cooking yes. and expediting. Yes. Chef Ramsay helped implement a system to help this restaurant run very smoothly from now until forever. I'm going to make something very, very simple with you all now, just a stunning mac and cheese. He also works with the chefs on some new cooking techniques. Golden Brown, take a spoon and have a little taste. Chef Ramsay has suggestions. I'm going to do my best to be as open as I can. <laughs> but I just, I don't know. We are going to reopen this restaurant tomorrow night with a system. One voice, one leader. Yes. And work as a team, yes. a system. Don't change it. Coming up. Shelly. I'm coming. It's the relaunch of Blackberries. Shelly. Will Shelly be able to handle the changes? Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. And later, a surprise ending. We have worked our ass off. You have to see to believe. Close the damn place down. After the implementation of a new system in the kitchen, Chef Ramsay and his team worked through the night to give the dining room a much needed makeover. Okay, good morning. Excited to see inside? Yeah. Yes. 
Let's go. Welcome to the new Blackbridge. When I first arrived here, there was the cafeteria, the menu on the wall, and it just lost that intimacy. Now it's a restaurant. Gone is the cafeteria. You have a wonderful, amazing new restaurant. Brand new tables, brand new chairs. It's a totally but... different place. Look at my album. Yes. <laughs> I promise you, they're not your records. I love my new restaurant. The artwork, the tables. It's like a dream come true. I absolutely love it. The soul is back. I'm just so excited and so grateful. I'm just overwhelmed. Shelly, how do you feel? I feel great. Oh, 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 that's rare. Oh, and thank God my middle name's James, right? <laughs> now that Blackberries has an updated look. Now for the exciting part, the food. Oh, wow. Chef Ramsay has created a fresh, new soul food menu to match it. What we've done is taken some of the dishes and modernized them a little bit, give them a bit of a, a new twist. Starting off with the black eyed pea fritters, delicious. Barbecue pulled pork sliders, wonderful starter. Entrees, fried chicken and waffles with the honey butter. Oh, snap! I Next love thing, that. A southern meatloaf sandwich done with mac and cheese and a spicy glaze, like a really nice, rich, spicy ketchup. Oh, man. I love it. I love it. Shelly looked like she was embracing the change very well. I'm glad that Chef Ramsay finally broke through to her. Is that beautiful? Dig in and have a taste. Oh, my God. Here we go. Fried chicken and waffles and blackberries. This menu is great. Mm-mm-mm. Wow. I think I have a winning combination here. Chef did it. Food, atmosphere, we're ready. Ooh, that's heavy. It's relaunch night at Blackberries. OK, we're about to open. We put a structure in place. And Chef Ramsay has given them all the tools they need to make this restaurant a success. Blackberries! Let's go. <laughs> Good afternoon. Welcome to Blackberries. This is a nice looking menu. With the restaurant filling up. We're going to do the pork sliders. And orders coming in from the dining room. Okay, Order good. in. It's now up to the newly appointed leader, Chef Mateen, to take charge of the kitchen. One jerk wings, one shorty, one chicken with white meat. Fried chicken, white meat, six minutes. Echo. Thank you. Good. Off we go. Here we go. Oh, thank you. Let's go. With Chef Ramsay's new system in place and the team working together. Shelly, six minutes on my oxtails. Echo on the oxtail. Thank you. Dinner service is off to a smooth start. Okay, here we go. We're rocking. And out in the dining room. Fried green tomatoes. Those are excellent. The customers are thrilled with what they are receiving. I need an oxtail shorty. Okay. Hey, Dad, you okay? The restaurant is packed. Wait till you see it. You're not going to believe it. I need an oxtail and a shorty right now. I'm on the line a little bit tonight. Shelly. Shelly. He was asking for stuff, and you're just ignoring him. I'm coming. OK. All right. Love you, Dad. You OK? Let's go, please. All right. Shelly being on the phone is totally disrespectful and a slap in the face to her kitchen team. What she's saying is, I don't give a damn. It's my world, and this is the way I'm going to do it. The rest of you, who cares? How long for my oxtail? What, what? Things were going really well at the beginning because they were being executed, but then I just don't think Shelly wanted to be there. I need an oxtail and a shorty first. <laughs> what? She's not in control, and if she's not in control, she doesn't want to follow it. Shelly. Yes, Shelly. It's like we've just switched off and forgotten. Yeah. Why have we forgotten our systems? The most important thing about a system is keeping it, yes? Go back to your stations. I am the owner of this business, and I'm just not taking any shit from anyone. Hell no. What is this? What? Who put my corn in it? I did. It's dry. I don't want it to dry out, honey. Don't do that. Shelly. Yes, Shelly, don't do that. You're doing, you're going back again. I don't want it to dry out. Come here. No, 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 come here. Come here. Look at me. I only ask you, don't do it. Okay. Mateen, yes. we're going back again. We're going back to our old bullshit ways. Don't touch what he's doing. OK. You said right. it's dry. Was it dry, the corn? No, it wasn't no, dry. It wasn't, it wasn't fucking even dry. It wasn't even done yet. Thank you. I don't care what you he don't... said. Chef Ramsay's system works. It's this Shelly that doesn't want it to work. So when it's sitting on the side, drying out, just leave it there. What are you talking about? Dry. I don't know. I don't want to hear it. 
Shelly! I'm not talking back. Shelly, now you walk away. Bye! Goodbye! Goodbye! She's gone. Bye. See you later. It's relaunch night at Blackberries. Don't touch what he's doing. And as Chef Ramsay tries to keep everything on track... It's not I don't want to hear it. Don't Shelly. Shelly goes off the rails. Goodbye. Goodbye. She's gone. And storms out of the kitchen. Goodbye. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. What happened? They were doing so good. Yeah. Shelly started coming in and picking up bits and disrupting them. I asked her to stop it and let my team do it, and she got really funny. Ever since then, she just switched off, so she's, she's closed down. Shelly is a crybaby. She's not willing to admit that she's wrong, and that's pretty sad. With Shelly out of the kitchen... Stop everything you're doing. Play this one for me right now. Chef Mateen and the staff try to pull it together. OK, and we're going to send a ticket out right now. To get the remaining dishes to the hungry diners. I'm hungry. Mateen, Let's go. you've got to push it. Yes, Chef. You control the kitchen. Yes. I need right now, I need two fried green tomatoes. I need that now. Working. OK? Working. Nice. Let's go. Can you get Dwayne to take this out for table one, please? Dwayne, off you go. Table 50, let's go. Finally. Might be a little slow, but it's going to be great. With Mateen leading the kitchen... I need a side of fries up in the window now. Side of fries. Good. The final entrees make their way out to the dining room. Yay, we got our food! And customers are loving the food. It's worth the wait. Wonderful, I think. You guys are good. It ran so smooth. We have a system now. This right here is the first day of greatness of many more days to come. And I loved it a lot. Everything was great. Thank, Thank you. you. With the staff completing a successful relaunch, Chef Ramsay yeah. gathers the group. Uh, OK. But there's someone missing. Where's, uh, Shelley? In the office. Shelley, can I, uh, can I talk to you? Please? Shelley? Shelley? No point in making yourself look any more stupid. Shelly, just two seconds. Not going to argue. She's not coming. We don't need her. Come on. Shelly needs to listen to Chef Ramsay. You just can't close ears to someone that's come to help you. Please. You really don't have anything to say. If, if you, don't you don't need to have anything to say. Just go outside. Out of respect for your staff. I love my staff. Well, then you want them to walk out on you and you'll have yeah, the restaurant? Let's go, man. I'll clean up tonight. My Forget staff. about cleaning up tonight. What about the rest of yeah. the days? Oh, dear. And I'm so ashamed of you that I don't know what mother. to do. Shelly, we have worked our oh, ass my off. God. Can you please well, get out of my If you are done, close the damn place down. Let's go, Tyrone. I don't believe Shelly deserves all this great help she got. I mean, someone like me that's been cooking and went to culinary school would kill for something like this opportunity, you know? It saddens me so much. OK. I know it's been a rough night, but on a personal note, I just want to say thank you. Why? Because you guys worked your butt off. Nobody gave up. There's something personal about soul food for me. I started a small little documentary called Kitchen Nightmares seven years ago, and my first ever restaurant was a soul food shack. It's why I started to put him back into the industry, and you guys deserve success. You did a fantastic job. Chef Ramsay, he's up there with the best angels. I'm just so delighted and so grateful, and we are going to do our part to make him proud of us. We definitely will make sure that your efforts were not in vain. Thank you. Thank you. Shelly had the world's greatest chef in here to teach her and to help her business, but she may throw this all, the whole system out the window with the whole menu. Only time can tell. Can we have 30 seconds, please? I think this is my office. Are you asking me for 30 seconds at my office? Yes, I am. Absolutely not. OK. That just sums it up. Yeah. That's the only thing I haven't changed. <sighs> I really wanted 
A happy ending tonight. Why? Because this week I've met some amazing people. Mother Mary, what a sweetheart, and a phenomenal cook. Mateen, that guy has a bright future, and he is packed with passion. But the fate and the future of Blackberries rest in the hands of Shelley. And unfortunately, restaurants do not succeed when they're run by a dictator. I planted a mouse, and she crazy. In the weeks that followed, Hi, nice to see you. Customers responded well to the changes Chef Ramsay made to the menu and the decor. Mm. The steak is tender. After witnessing the positive reviews, surprisingly, Shelly embraced all that Chef Ramsay has done for blackberries. Nice, right? Beautiful. I like it. I was so skeptical, but Chef Ramsay has opened up a new world for us here at Blackberries. I'm ready for change. It was difficult for me to see that at the beginning, but here it is. The truth is the light. You guys enjoy. Just 10 minutes away from the Jersey Shore is the small suburban town of Oakhurst, home to the family-run Mike and Nellie's. Opened in 1996, the restaurant was the lifelong dream of two men, Nellie Farber and his son Mike. I wanted to name it Nellie Mike's, but he said, no, it's Mike and Nellie's, you're the man, because he's that kind of guy. Everybody loved my father. Everybody would come in to talk to Nelly. He knew everybody's name, made everybody feel special. He was the front of the house. My dad was the back, Nelly's the front. We were a very good team. He brought in the people, and I kept them here. Everything was going great until Nelly passed away. When my grandpa Nellie died, we didn't really know what to do anymore. It felt weird to be here. Like, it's not really Mike and Nellie's without Nellie. Now it's just kind of Mike and nothing. All right, let me go write a check. When he left this earth, I had to take over doing everything that he did. Ice cream delivery. Plus what I do, and I just become overwhelmed. Slow the shit down. I know, it's pretty bad. <laughs> Since my grandpa died, the restaurant's been neglected. Hi, is there anything that I can help you with? Yeah, can you <laughs> Oh, ew, okay. The restaurant is grimy. The carpet is a mess. It's nasty, crusty, moldy. It's tragic to look around. I think they need to redo this place. People, they don't come here for atmosphere. They come here for food. And the food here, I believe, is great. It reminds me of like magic. Yeah, it's like there's something wrong with it, like chemicals. How's everything with your dinner? Anything you want to share with me? A little Sorry. bit more cooked. Yeah, it's like sun. Mike's food, it's really not up to standard. Mike, do me a favor. Will you push 22, please? I got it. When I first started, Mike would never just dump the food out into the plate. Now it's like, it doesn't matter. But yet, at the same time, he thinks that this food is great. They don't like it. Well, what's the fucking reason? It just says it has no taste. Oh, and... really? Yeah. I've only been making French chase for 35 years. Can you believe this shit? The biggest problem at Mike and Nelly's isn't the decor. Honestly, the big problem is Mike. Everybody didn't go out. All right, I got it. I got it. He feels that he comes in, he has to take care of everything. Did I call for a veal capri? I got it. Give it to me, right? This is my job. He doesn't let other people take moral responsibility. It's just becoming too much for him. I want to get my drink. Since Uncle Nelson's passing, Mike does drink quite a bit. I put a beer in the freezer, a couple beers in there, these are hot. There are some nights where he's just completely hammered. Where's the two flounders? I don't know where anything is today. It starts to affect the food, and he starts to miss things on the tickets. I don't even know how many fillets I got, but you know what I'm doing, man. My dad is my hero, and it's very difficult to know that my hero is struggling and, like, gasping for air, you know? I really wish I was able to ignore the fact that this is my dad's life. I really, really hope that Chef Ramsay can help. Before Chef Ramsay arrives at Mike and Nelly's, there's a young woman anxious to fill him in on the issues of the restaurant. Mike's oldest daughter, Samantha. Thanks for helping us. Samantha, right? Yeah, hi. Good to see you. Nice to see you. Thanks for picking me up. I'm excited for you to be here. Well, I'm um, excited to be here. First time for me. Um, how have you been? I'm all right. Yeah? Yeah, just 
We really need help right now. Yeah? Yeah, a lot of problems at the restaurant. What's the one thing that you think is wrong with it? Ever since my grandpa died and my dad, he hasn't been able to move forward. OK. How close were they? They worked together for 18 years. My grandpa, he was the front of the house. He would host, and people would come to Mike and Ellie's only to see him. He was a great guy. He was very funny. And how's Dad changed over the last couple of years? He's very overwhelmed and stressed. Really? But he likes to do everything by himself. But he just can't delegate? Right, definitely a control freak. He's the boss, you know? Everywhere sure. in his life, he's the boss. So it'll be very interesting when you wow. have stuff to say to him. Wow. I hope Chef Ramsay can get through to my dad. He needs the help, he needs the change. It's crucial for the restaurant to survive and be successful for my family. I mean, that's my whole life. Hello. Hi. How Welcome are you? Like I'm Lexi. Right. Sister number two. Sister number two. Yes. Right. You are glamorous. Thank you. Amazing, amazing. Um, what's that smell? Is it just me? I don't you smell, smell it. it. Go outside, take a big deep breath of fresh air and come no, back no, in. No, no, I smell your cologne, which smells good. <laughs> okay, wait. Ready? Let's do it. Now, what is that? No, it doesn't smell to you there. No, no I just smell just you. Just there. I just smell you. Ready? Did somebody die in here last night? No, it's okay. possible. No. Oh, oh, Jesus. Okay, what well, happened? What kind of question is that? All right, I, follow I, me, I haven't tasted the food yet. All right. I'd love to meet Dad. All right, I'll go get him. What's that smell? Can you smell something? No. Oh. <laughs> How are you? Good to see you. Same here, sir. Come and say hello. And you are? Lewis. Lewis. The manager. You're the manager? Yes. Yeah, good to see you. Same here. Dad? Yes, ma'am. Chef Ramsay would like to meet you. Me? Meet Why you? Why me? I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. Why would he want to meet you? Call me. I am quite nervous about Chef Ramsay's visit and how my dad's self-esteem will take it because he has a hard time taking criticism. This is good my father, Mike. Mike. I'm Mike. Pleasure. But the fact is, we need the help, and if somebody's willing to give it to us, we need to take it. I really hope that he can help Dad. How long have you been open? 15 years. 15 years. Yeah, when was the last time you changed something in the dining room? Uh, never. Wow. Everything's pretty much as I bought it. Yeah. 15 years ago. And how would you rate your food, 1 to 10? I would rate my food in the upper 9s. Wow. Great. I love that. Uh, I can't wait to yeah. taste it. The food is not the problem here. It's either the atmosphere, the ambience, or the service. Here's your regular menu, and here's your specials menu, sir. Does someone pee pee on my menu? <laughs> on this one. <laughs> is, that a, is that I don't know. That's not a urine stain, though. I don't think so. No. I'm pretty sure it's probably coffee. OK, great. Thank you. If you need anything, I'm at the front. Oh, smell. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? Oh, how are you? Janine, I'll be your server tonight. Oh, good to see you. Can you smell that? Or is it just me? You smell something, right? Yes. Honestly, it's like that we buried like bodies underneath the carpet. Yes, it's most definitely the carpet. It stinks. I, the restaurant is filthy, disgusting. It's full of mold. It's worse over there. <laughs> Seriously? You're in the good part. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Um, steak and seafood, and we have Italian food. Uh, Ginny, what is it? Fine dining restaurant or Italian? What are we? I don't know. Wow. There is no identity. OK. I'll start with green with shrimp sauce. Okay. And let's go for chicken murphy. And then the special menu, the steak nelly. The steak the, nelly? Yeah. How would you like that cooked? mid rare Please, thank you very much. You're very welcome. I want to see where that 9 out of 10's hitting. It's only that there. Yeah, I'm moving. Chef Ramsay's order. Here we go. Chef Ramsay will like the food here. Anything that I make him, he's going to like. Guaranteed. it. Look at this place. Disaster. Louis. Chef? What happened to that lampshade over there on the wall? I don't know. Fix it. It's bugging me. How are you? Nice to see you. It's driving me crazy. I'm sorry. Oh, oh it comes on when it goes up anyway. Sorry. Just watch your head there. That's for the chef. Make it nice. I made it, so it's right on the money. OK, chef. Thank you. You're welcome. What? Greeny with shrimp sauce. And greeny with shrimp sauce. Oh, dear. Wow, that was gross. Yeah, it's bland. 
It's just the I mean, sauce is burned. Yeah, everything's watery and shrimps are like rubber. It's horrible. Oh, Nowhere near a nine. All right. Would you like me to remove that from your Yes, table? please, darling. The sad part is this isn't even the worst of it. This is bland, watery. The shrimp tastes like rubber. I don't know what he's talking about. I am a perfectionist. I will never put out food unless it's right. Is this the Murphy? Yeah. Chicken Murphy. Chicken Murphy. Yeah. Wow. I was afraid to serve him the chicken Murphy. It doesn't look very nice, does it? Um, it's embarrassing. It looks like a stew gone bad. That looks horrible. Okay. Where's the manager? Lewis. Is that the normal style of presentation of chicken Murphy? Sam, Lexi. Girls. Um, visually impact. And does that look appetizing to you? Could definitely use an appearance update. A little mush. Mush. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. After Nelly died, the food's been kind of going downhill. It's kind of at the point where it's necessary for someone to say something. That's gross. It's overcooked. Just wet, soggy, and just tasteless. I call it a hot mess. I call it a hot joke. I'm done, thanks, honey. Yes, you're very welcome. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. I can't afford to be up all night with the shits. Oh, excuse me. Thank God you didn't have the chicken Murphy. Bloody hell. Oof. Mike, it's just a hot mess, so... Hey, tough son of a bitch. Chef Ramsay is a ball buster, but if you have an impossible math problem, if Einstein was still alive, you'd talk to him. So we have a restaurant problem. We talk to the master. How you doing? It's for the better. You can tell that Chef Ramsay being so critical of the food, it kind of hurt my dad a little bit, but my dad needs help, and if this is what it takes, then this is what it takes. What's next? For the finale, it's going to be the steak Nelly. Right. Best of luck. I don't need to give him any more things to hate. I grew up cooking steaks, and I'm a master of the grill. I'm telling you, I'm good at this, man. I'm very good at this. Wow. This is the steak Nelly? Steak Nelly. Is that a steak or charcoal? No, oh, chef. That's a piece of the steak. Wow. Look, guys. Oh, God. Wow. That just tastes of burnt charcoal. I feel like I've got a barbecue in my mouth. Have got a taste of that. How does that taste for you? Would you give that a nine? No. No. Like you said, it is charcoal. Char That's charcoal. Mike, what do you say? This tastes like it's charcoal. You didn't like it? No. I tried it. It's nothing wrong with it? Well, like you said, there's a little bit of uh, charcoal. There ain't no way in hell I overcooked that steak. That's something that I make that everybody loves, and I never have a complaint. Aren't you going to go out there? What? I don't know. Shouldn't you go out there? You are the owner, so you're supposed to check on things. I hope my dad will be willing to listen to Chef Ramsay and take the criticism and acknowledge that everything isn't perfect. Sit down. Instead of just being mad. Uh, Mike, I'm, uh, you know, I'm embarrassed. We've got some fucking big issues here. I thought the food was dated. I don't know how you can top the menu that size. And then some of the things were inedible. The food that was watery, bland, soggy. I know how to cook. Come on. The whole thing just looked an absolute fucking mess. What, with that last steak? Right. I mean, how do you put a dish like that together? Well, the steak itself is a prime steak, so, I mean, uh, my... I was overcooked, so I had no prime. You rated the food 9 out of 10. I wouldn't pass it above 2. That's not good enough to come back for. Nowhere near it. I mean, I'm just going to tell you, man to man, it's not true. Either you're in denial or you don't care. Jeff Ramsey said my food was outdated, and, you know, I respect him, but I believe he's wrong in this situation. I know what my customers like, and I know what I like. That's what I like. Fuck that. Nah, I don't want really to give a shit. After a lunch that left a lot to be desired, Chef Ramsey is back at Mike and Nelly's for dinner. Hi there, can I help you? And he isn't alone. Hello. Word of his arrival is spread, and the restaurant is booked solid for the evening. Free rush beer. What would you like tonight? I'm going to have the shrimp steak. Oh, the chicken scarpiello. OK. Portobello mushroom with jumbo lump. 
Sunshine Artichoke, Alfredo Shrimp Farm. Just tell me quickly how it works, line-wise. Here's what happens, Chef. They do all the cooking, and then they'll put the food out. I don't trust my staff to get the job done like I can do it. As long as I'm making it, I know it's 100%. Yeah, I got snapper, pork, and pepper. I got penny vodka. I got chicken farm. All right. Despite the fact that most of the cooking is being done by one person. Shrimp farm, eggplant farm. Give me 14. All right. Mike manages to push out food rapidly. Shrimp farm? Not at all, baby. My friend, lobster rev. I take this and go. But his quick cooking. Wow. Look at this food. Unfortunately, comes at a cost. No good. No yeah. good at all. Is something wrong with your back? My bread's falling off. Let's okay. take it back. Yeah. Let me know. Hey guys, the fried calamari, just let you know, it was mushy. It wasn't good. They didn't enjoy it. Just give you a heads up on that. That is something. I take nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all. It's embarrassing. There's a man in there that is killing himself, and he's going down in flames. There's no stand-up set. Everything's just so chaotic. Pans have been thrown, steaks are on fire, and he's sort of totally oblivious to the kind of crap that's leaving his kitchen. It's actually quite sad. What's wrong with that? He said it's overcooked. All right. This eggplant rollatini, she says it's the worst eggplant she ever had. It's not even rolled. <laughs> Mike, let's say it was burnt. Oh, <sighs> It's hard to bring food back to Mike because Mike thinks the food is excellent. I know he's been cooking for 30 years, but the food is really not up to par. Onions are a little charcoal. Are they a little too well done for you? Oh, yeah. Let me take them away and bring some fresh ones for you. All right, sir? Thank you so much. Since Nellie's passed, the kitchen is a disaster. What's wrong now? Too well, too burnt. The food is not what it used to be. It's extremely frustrating. Mike, can I get more charred onions, but not too burnt, please? Charred onions, please. Charred onions. Mike, let's char this charcoal. You're absolutely correct. That's charcoal. I need a charred onion right now. On the outside, Mike is really not showing any kind of emotions, but if you look into his eyes, you see this heartbreak this beating that he's taking internally. It's depressing. How's everything going back there? Yeah. Disaster. Disaster. Does your dad work like that every night? Yeah. And he's destroying himself. I mean, he's just absolutely nailing himself. He doesn't delegate as well as he should. Like, he's reading the ticket, and then he's getting it ready, and then he's cooking it, and then he's reading another order. And it's hard to watch, yeah. How are you supposed to run an entire restaurant, cook everybody's meal by yourself? Like, you can't do that. Hot stuff coming through. He doesn't really trust anybody else in the kitchen to help him, and it's a problem. Mike. Yes? I need to worry about that uh, refire on Penny Vodka. Hold on a minute, girlfriend. Get him. I'm going as fast as I can, baby. You all right? I want this night to be over. Here's a Penny Vodka. Take it, go. All the tickets are out. There's nothing left. All right, guys. Spirits for everybody. Go grab them, man. One for me, too, right? I'm lost of words. Watching both of you behind the line in that kind of commotion there, it's like soldiers on the front line. In your mind, you've got it now that if you get through this battle, tonight's a success. You just want to get that food out. Do you enjoy cooking like that? I don't know if I enjoy it. It's just like what I do. But I mean, I bust my ass. I cook until we're done cooking. Working hard is one thing. Working fast and throwing food out with no care is another. No one's monitoring standards, and no one seems to care. You are running yourself into the ground. Dan, can I have a word with Yeah, Yes, sir. Will you shut the door, please? Certainly. Listen, seriously, have you been drinking? I'm having a vodka cranberry juice. I saw you drinking some beer. Uh, two beers, sir. Two beers. Right. Two beers. That is not the way forward. You've got to get your head in the game, because the kind of mistakes that you made tonight represents a chef that doesn't seem to give a shit. I do give a shit. I do. I Listen, I drink too much, you know. But why are you doing this to yourself? I don't know. I just don't know. I'm like, I'm lost. I'm lost in space. Why? I don't know. Life's just getting tougher for me, man. You know? I mean, this business is failing. 
I owe everybody money. I got two daughters going to college, and I'm just trying to like make it. You now, and it's not working anymore. You know. I don't know where to move from here. It's hard for me, you know. This is my passion. I only know how to cook. That's all I've ever done, you know, since I was 19 years old. The passion. When did that go? I don't know. After Dad passed away? Yes. Yeah. You know, since my father died, I'm starting to give up. I am. I, I can admit it to you. I'm like, I feel defeated. Is know? that why you're drinking more? Yeah, probably. You can't go down this line, Mike. You cannot go down this line. It's the beginning of the end. I'm telling you. Well, I don't know what to do next. I really don't. I'm confused. But you've got to get out of denial. And there's got to be a fire in your belly that you've got to rekindle. That's all. Okay. I'll try my best. Okay. See you in the morning. Right. Good night. Good night. This restaurant is definitely taking a toll on me. Everything falls on my lap, and it's wearing me out. It's a tough life. After the death of his father, Mike has been in a downward spiral, and so has his restaurant. He has clearly lost his way. And Chef Ramsay knows that in order for this restaurant to have any chance of surviving... How are you? Morning. I'm good. How are you? He has to put Mike back on course. It's quite nice getting out of the restaurants. Yeah. yeah. It almost feels like it's um, like a ticking time bomb in there. And I'm concerned, I think, really, about Dad. And I had a chat with him last night, and he was, for the first time, being open and honest. He admitted he'd lost control, and sadly, that he was on the verge of giving up and we can't give up. And then I noticed something upsetting last night, is the amount of drink. I feel like he's trying to drown his sorrows. Yeah. Definitely. I think he's very lost right now. Everything fell on his shoulders after, after Nelly passed away, and it's just so much mm -hmm. more responsibility, and mm -hmm. that's a lot to handle. Yeah. I don't think he got over losing his father. I don't think he's got over that hurdle. I don't think so, no. No, I mean, we were he was back at work, you know, and there was no time off. It was. Mm -hmm. He was just there. I think he's hurting. I think deep down inside, I, I don't see a happy... No, you can tell that he's hurting. Mm -hmm. Like, always. <sighs> That's awful. I mean, he's got two kids in college, and, like, what does he have to show for it? Like, he's working so much harder than he should be. Mm -hmm. And, like, he's suffering so much, and I hate to see him like that. But Dad is driving himself into the ground. I don't know how much longer, you know, he can continue to do it. You know, it's about time we actually turned around and said, hey, Dad, I want you back. I don't want you to listen. I don't want you to slow down. He's your dad. You're his last hope. And last night, that was a cry for help. Do you think you can help him? Yeah. Of course I'm here to help. But I can't help unless he's prepared to change himself. Hello, chef. Morning, Mike. How are you? A uh, tough night last night, right? Yeah. Quite. I came to see the girls because I think the bottom line is, Mike, you mean a lot to this family, and there's no doubt in how hard you're working, but you're not a machine. <clears throat> you're not 25, Mike. You know, you're 55. And the girls have got something to say, and I want you to listen. OK. And I'll see you back at the uh, restaurant. OK. OK, thank you. Thank you, girls. Bye. So, uh, what do you want to tell me? It's really difficult seeing you, like, struggling this much and working so hard. Right. You have to let go a little bit and not work as hard as you are. I understand. I understand. I don't know how to let go. I don't trust anybody else. But I think that in order for you to be able to function like this, you need to let some other people take on some responsibilities. I would love to take take off and let them I know you I know, but you don't, you don't trust, trust them enough to do it. You know you have your guard up all the time. I do. You, you, don't, you don't, like, trust anyone. So what do we need, a nicer mic? Is that what you're saying? No, we need no, a more just... open mic. OK. <laughs> so I'm willing to give a shot at change here. And you're going to open up, though, and, like, let people actually just talk to you? It's not going to be an overnight thing, but I'm willing to listen. 
I've been wanting to tell my dad these things for a long time already, and I really hope that he was listening because the problem with the restaurant isn't that we need a decoration change. The fact is that my dad needs the change. After spending the morning at Mike's home, Chef Ramsay is anxious to get Mike back in the kitchen. Show me the fridges. And reignite his passion with food. Well, here's the meat. Steaks go right up on the grill. Jesus, those trays not clean last night? No, time? I didn't clean them last no? night. I got out of here. They're Shit. a little messy. What's that? I don't know. That's chicken farm. That's cooked. Yeah, that's cooked. That's with raw. Uh-huh. We don't get these fridges changed at night? On Sunday nights, we do a deep cleaning. So it's Monday. Yesterday was Sunday night. Yeah. Are they all kept like this? Mike, you gotta cover this stuff. Seriously? What else you got going on here? Look at this. I'm getting nervous now. 30 years in the business, come on. I'm thinking, holy shit, what else is he gonna find in here that is gonna embarrass me? Oh, you're kidding me. What is that? Who's responsible for this? Jeff Ramsey was looking forward to working with the chefs on fixing the food. Show me the fridge. That is until he made a series of shocking discoveries. Oh, you're kidding me. What is that? Who's responsible for this? Mike, come on. Seriously? Why is it in here? Where's the walk-in right over here? You are kidding me. What is that? That's the lobster bisque. Shit. Eggplant. What's that? Yeah. That is the calamari from last night. It was prepped yesterday. Why is it bubbled? Jesus Christ. Why is it in here? You're right, Chef. Get it out. That's contaminated. We can't leave fridges like this. I do know those things need to be changed. I tried to talk to Mike, but he won't listen to me. My food got served from that fridge last night. Yeah. Unbelievable. What's in here? That. Those are meatballs. When were they made? They were made probably last week. Last week. How do you know it's a week old? No dates. Does that make any sense? Come on, this is basic. It's just become sloppy here, and I need to start making things right. The fridge has been ignored at the end of the evening, and then food's left in the oven. Oh, come on. You're absolutely right. It's a disgrace. And discovering that, what am I supposed to do now? Where do we start? Tell me. What time are the team in? 2.30. Get them in earlier. I want that whole fucking place clean. You're better than this. Fuck me. Yo, get a ride in as quickly as possible. Chef Ramsay wants everybody here now. I believe it's time to turn this place upside down. Some things are falling through the cracks, but cracks can be filled. Everything can be fixed. Every night from now on. Right. No more fucking around. All right. Can't do what I'm doing. I'm going to have to change if I want to change my restaurant. Goodbye, beer. I'm ready. This is where we're going to start to fix this place. With a thorough cleaning by the staff and what appears to be a change in attitude by Mike. Uh, first of all, the place is looking cleaner. Chef Ramsay can now turn his attention to the area that needs the most help, the kitchen. So I'm going to do two steaks, a ribeye on the bone and a filet. I've been cooking steaks for 32 years. I know how I do it, which is the right way. But maybe he can teach me something in a nice way. Not in a I'm gonna kill you kind of way. <laughs> okay, onto the grill. I wanna render that fat down. Cooking with Chef Ramsay is a dream come true. Uh, get a nice seat. Oh, on there, please, Daniel. With that, I'm gonna do a chive mash. It's just great to see how his hands move like a ballet with his fingers. I was in awe. That's a real mashed potato. No nice. horseradish down there? A, a touch of horseradish, well spotted. I felt super inspired by Chef Ramsay. I don't know how to put it into words right now. Asparagus, some fries for the filet, a touch of creme fraiche. Perfect. I'm used to cooking like one certain way, and this is a little different. When you spend a fortune on the ingredients, I want the customers to taste them. I want it to ooze the flavor of a ribeye. Simply done. Let's have a little uh, taste, yeah? I'm feeling very, very well. I can already feel the fire burning in my gut, which is something that has not happened in a while. Uh, waiting stuff. Get some knife and forks. Dig in. Everybody's good. Oh, my gosh. It just melts in your mouth. I love these asparagus. I'm coming over. I'm so excited to see it. My dad's so happy. It seems like he really does want to change things and make things better, and I know he can really do it. 
Can I order this for dinner? This is so good. Unbelievable. Now that Mike has finally seen the light with how his steaks can be improved, no more food to go out that we got some pride with. Perfect. Chef Ramsay is now focused on the makeover of Mike and Nelly. And he begins with something that has been driving him crazy since the day he walked into the restaurant. I need some help. Okay. I've come across the most wretched carpet I've ever seen, and it is deplorable. So I need something durable, something strong, something that can take a lot of footfall. Okay. Uh, that's nice. I like that one as well with the blue. Can we get this done tonight? Is that possible? Absolutely. With one major change in motion, Chef Ramsay's team is hard at work trying to accomplish one of the most difficult makeovers they have ever faced. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Good morning, Chef. How are we feeling? Excited. Hi, guys. Nervous. Mike, I've never seen you look so nervous. I'm speechless. You're speechless. OK, today I am proud to unveil the new Mike and Ellis. Are you ready? Yes. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> OK. One. Two. Mike and Nelly's Steakhouse. Oh my god, it's so nice. <laughs> Look at that. Wasn't that Mike and Nelly's steak and seafood? Well, what this community is lacking is a great steakhouse, yes? Steakhouse has been my dream my whole life long. <sighs> right now, I'm so overwhelmed with emotion, I don't even know how I'm standing here. Mike, one thing that you're gonna see when you walk through that door is a new identity and a new you. I'm a new me, let's do it. Let's go, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody ready? Ready. Go straight into the restaurant. Oh. Off you go. Oh Jump in. Oh, oh, my my god. God. oh my 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 god. It is gorgeous. Yes, it chills everywhere. Wow. This is so good. No way. That's a whole Stop. transformation. Oh. Welcome to the new Mike and Ellis. This is gorgeous. This, this is, is so great. Beautiful. This is awesome. <laughs> we walk in, see the restaurant for the first time. We see modern art, the new chairs, the new carpet. I can't get a smile off my face. It's outstanding. It's awesome. It's so good. This is great. Okay. Look at this place. Wow. Gone are those hideous arches. We've opened the restaurant up. You have a very elegant, open space. And it's stylish. Gone is the old, worn out decor and replace with a stunning, contemporary, rustic look. New carpet, wow. and that smell has gone. I want to take my shoes off. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, my God, it's incredible. Oh, my God. Unreal. I Big man, you OK? I'm totally amazed. <laughs> yeah? Oh, there you are. I don't, I don't even know what I'm talking about. I'm so amazed. <laughs> <laughs> my dream my whole life is to be a steakhouse. It's an absolute transformation that's beyond my wildest dreams. Janine, how are you feeling? I, we're going to be the talk of the town, yeah. and Big we're going to and we're going to do you proud. We will. Trust me, you're going to do yourselves proud. <laughs> if Nelly was here right now, he would be so happy. He really would, and I can feel him here now. In addition to the updated look and new identity, oh. come in, please. Chef Ramsay has created an elegant, flavorful <laughs> modern menu. Uh. Welcome to the new Mike and Ellie's menu. <laughs> This menu is our foundation, our new start to Mike and Ellie's. Simple, delicious, and modern. Okay, see this look. It's incredible. Let's start off at the top of the table here. Maryland crab cakes, delicious, simple, served with a Old Bay mayonnaise, yeah? Angus sliders. Yeah, slider. Aged white cheddar, shaved lettuce, and a special sauce. The hallmark of this restaurant is going to be the steaks. I love it. Start off with a filet mignon, eight ounce, beautifully grilled. Finish with that wonderful, delectable butter. New York strip, 12 ounce, modern and beautiful and stunning. Next to that, we've got a delicious braised short rib. That's served with a red wine sauce and whipped chive potatoes. The side dishes. Look at that mac and cheese. Oh, my god. How can you have a steakhouse with no mac and cheese? It's topped with some crispy breadcrumbs. Delicious. That's unbelievable. Right, guys, can you get some spoons, knife and forks? <laughs> I want you to dig in. Thank you. Yay. Dig in, dig in, dig in. Sam, trust you to go straight for the desserts. They're fantastic. Oh my god, the filet. I gotta get over there. <laughs> oh my god. I thought my food was good, but the new menu is just unbelievable. Oh my god. Mmm. This is so good. You are the man, Chef Ramsay. 
You came in here and you turned us completely around. This is definitely the start of something big. I see this restaurant going far. As the doors open on relaunch night. Hello, welcome to the new Mike and Ellie's. Welcome. There's excitement in the air and a buzz in the dining room. The decor is awesome now. As customers are eager to try out the new Mike and Nelly's Steakhouse. Back in the kitchen. Here we go, guys, yes. Chef Ramsay wants the workload divided, with Mike doing less and Dan doing more. Daniel, I'm trying to get him to break away. You are the future, so show it to me and show it to him. Yes, sir. Good. Mike, focus on the grill. Okay. I want you, Daniel, running this and coordinate the kitchen tonight. I hope Mike will back off a little and let me come in and help him out. I'm very capable of taking over. The most important thing is that everything goes out perfect. I'm hoping that Dan can handle the rush. I've been trying to find a chef for the last 15 years that can do what I do. This is nerve-wracking shit. Yeah. Here we go. First ticket. Order in. One strip mid-well, one strip medium. I want to hear an echo. A callback. I got two strips, medium well and medium. Thank you, buddy. So far, Chef Ramsay's plan is working. Mike gets the first steaks on the grill. Wipe the plate down, please. Make it look pretty. Come on. Dan gets the kitchen in sink. Crab cakes up in the window. Useful. Let's go. And customers are receiving their appetizers. This is really good. It's like heaven. And the reviews are glowing. Next entree, short ribs, strip mid-rare. One ribeye mid-rare and a french fry. Where are those fries? Coming right now, baby. 25 seconds. 25 seconds, all right. I'm feeling great. Everybody is working together as a team. We're going to be firing. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I have four fillets up here. But only one hour into service, Mike is no longer working in tandem with Dan. Order a tomato, a Caesar, a crab cake. That's the one I just called for that's going out. And instead of allowing Dan to organize, Mike is now confusing the kitchen. Stop, take a step back, and regroup. Let's go. Next ticket to strip medium, filet medium. All right, let's start putting these steaks up. We've just stopped listening to each other. I'm the main cog in this restaurant. I always have been, always will be. Dan, I was doing this before you were born. Mike, you can't slip into these old ways. Kill him here, man. I don't know what's going to happen. Mike's not listening to what Chef Ramsay is saying. We've all forgotten what the fuck we're doing in here. Everything is falling apart. Everything is going to shit. Mike, just let me do this. Come on, guys. You know what? Slow the shit down. You're going ahead. I have no idea what you're talking about, dude. You're fucking us over big time. And right now, I'm having up. It's only an hour into relaunch at Mike and Nelly's. We're going to be firing a hold steak. On, hold on, hold on. I have four fillets up here. Mike has slipped back into his old ways and is refusing to share the leadership of the kitchen with Dan. You're going ahead. I have no idea what you're talking about, dude. And a successful relaunch is in jeopardy. I need you running this and coordinate the kitchen properly. And I want you to be behind him, yes? Yes, sir. All right, let's pick up one strip medium. Pick it up, ribeye, shrimp, chicken, and ribeye. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm losing you. You're confirming to me you're not lifting one little bit. I know it's hard, but it's not fucking difficult. It will be if you don't listen. Get them working for you. Uh -huh. I need Daniel now to start firing these orders. Right, I got you. Come on, you can do this. This restaurant is not all about me. I need help to run it, and Dan's the man to do it. Order in, strip. Filet medium, ribeye medium. Excellent, let's go. Next up, two skirt, one rare, one mid-rare. I got it, Daniel. Rare's going on, it'll be two minutes. With Dan regaining control of the tickets. Dan, yeah, tell me again what's going on right now. Filet medium cod. Filet medium and a cod, got it. The kitchen has found a proper rhythm. Medium well on the right, Chef. Mike, yes, sir. our steaks look fantastic. I got it, baby. My table loved all their steaks. Thank you. I got zero complaints about the food tonight. Everything was amazing. Steaks rested? Yes, they are. Put it out, baby. Dan was really into his job tonight and really took a lot of pressure off of me. Like the way it looks in here? Right. The food will be out in plenty of time, and you'll love it. It was very rewarding walking around out there. Good. Nice to see it. I felt my father's spirit here watching over me and everybody, and it felt wonderful. How you doing, Daddy? I can't get the smile off my face. My dad completely turned it around. It's great to see him. So happy. Mike, how was the dining room? I'm good, bro. Everybody looks happy and smiling. Keep it that way. All right, brother. The board is clear. Chef Ramsay showed my staff that they need to support what I do. Everybody did great. I think this is going to be the most successful place around here. Well, let me tell you something. When I first arrived, your head was in the grill, stubborn, wouldn't come out. You've transformed and worked with me. Thank you. In there right now is the spirit of Nelly. I agree. And for me, that is enough to confirm that you can do it. I believe in you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, 
you so much for everything. We appreciate Peace. everything you did and more. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Uh, Likewise. It's you. good to see you, bud. Yeah. Keep it going. Yes. Well done. Chef Franz inspired me. I was ready to close this place up. So we got through it. We persevered. And now I'm going to rock this place. I'm going to rock this town. Come here. Thank I you. My father, Nelson, would be crying right now, overwhelmed by joy. I know he's watching. Patty, thank you. I hope you're proud of him. Good job. Thank you, sir. Yeah, look after him, will you? Will do. Thank you for everything. Thanks okay. so much again. Get that spirit in there. Well done. When I first arrived at Mike and Ellie's, this had to be the most depressing restaurant in America, from the food to the decor, even to the owner. But tonight, with the help of a guardian angel named Nelly, a miracle happened because this restaurant has become the hottest steakhouse in the whole of New Jersey. I just hope it will continue along those lines. That carpet, I've never smelled anything so disgusting in all my fucking life. I'm sure there's bodies under there. In the weeks that followed, business in Mike and Nelly's boomed. It's amazing. Clearly, the new menu is a big hit in this New Jersey town. I will be back for this one. Look at this menu, my god. This is a classic steakhouse menu. My customers love it. Outstanding. This is the whole turnaround I've been waiting for. Order in. Dan has been outstanding in his new role in the kitchen. 15 seconds, 15 seconds. Do we have those strips mid well? Coming right now, baby. And Mike? is embracing the change. Wow. Wait to see the menu. Allowing him to spend more time with his diners. It was excellent. Thank you. And now, he's following in the footsteps of his father. I love you, brother. I love you, too. And there is nobody happier than his two daughters, Samantha and Lexi. Anaheim, California. The most populated city in Southern California's famed Orange County home to a family-run restaurant named Luigi's the Italian. It was opened in 1981 by a promising young chef with a dream, Luigi Catazzone. My dream was to always own a restaurant, and my dream did come true. When my father took a loan on his house, and we uh, opened a small restaurant. And with the aid of his father, Dominic, Luigi was able to make the restaurant successful for many years. Luigi's is definitely an Anaheim staple. It was our favorite place to go. Whenever I used to come here as a kid, it was just a really, really great atmosphere. In 1999, Dominic retired to Italy and brought in his other son, Tony, to help Luigi run the restaurant. Tony and Luigi have totally different ways of running the restaurant. There's like two different sets of standards. Tony, we got a half a calamari prime mozzarella ready. Tony is a little bit lazy, taking shortcuts. Tony. Whenever Luigi's here, Luigi wants to be more hands-on. There's more yelling and screaming. You're interfering with my cooking. Get the fuck out of here. I don't agree with the way he runs it and the way he does it. We start pointing fingers at each other, and we fight. There's a thing called professionalism, man, and that's not professional. You can't lose it like that. We can work hard. Tony sit in his ass all the time. They don't do shit. I get pissed off a lot of times because Tony got to take a more serious the job. You kill him! I got to say the yell and say, you know what? It's not, it's not fair. Your brother can kill you. Without your brother, you be this way. You be homeless. Fuck you! You do this to me. I feel like I'm being pushed to the limit. Luigi's yelling, Grace is yelling. I'm trying to keep my sanity here. There's too much yelling going on. I, I, I got a headache. There is a lot of drama that goes on here. That's a ball of shit! Everything will go. Everything will go. The arguments and the stress of the restaurant, it does spill over into the dining room a lot. Answer this question! Answer! Diners don't want to go to, to this restaurant or any restaurant to get yelled at. OK, sex, go! Fuck you! I'm going to go back to you. I've been here for right, years. Right. What do you come in for? Complain or what? Luigi, Tony, Grace, they just can't seem to work together. You can't go yelling at people like that. It's wrong. Oh, baloney. They, they complain about everything on the dish. They're neighbors. They come over here. You guys are treating them like crap. They don't know nothing about food. It's tearing the family apart. The way the restaurant is going, it's going to go broke in a month. We're in debt total a million and a half dollars. I don't know if we're going to make it. We're going to see what we're going to do. It's too much stress. If I had to close the doors, I would feel like I failed my father and everything that we worked for together. I would lose everything that I've worked for all my life. I don't know if tomorrow I'm going to make it. 
I don't know if I'm gonna pay my bills. World's gone viral today, and a restaurant's reputation can live or die in seconds on the internet. So I'm here in Anaheim visiting Luigi's restaurant. I'm going to check out their website. Uh, wow, uh, this one looks good. Um, a young, very talented, 22-year-old chef. Oh, look at that. Clearly a youthful maestro. Well, that's encouraging. I can't wait to see what's on the inside. Um, great start. 22. Wow. Hi. Morning. Hey, how are you? Hi, welcome to Luigi's. Good Joe. to see you. Joe, good to see you, buddy. Gordon. Hi, nice meeting you. And your position is? I'm a waiter. Excellent. And you've got a bit of a uh, hot chef in there. Yes, definitely. Uh, could you go and get in, please? Absolutely. Thank you. Wow, look at this place. Luigi's d'Italia. Hmm. Oh, hello, Chef Ramsey. Yeah. Pleasure to meet you. Gordon, good to see you. Um, hold on a minute. You're not 22. I'm 51. You're 51? I'm reading the latest report on your website, a youthful maestro, 22 years of age in the kitchen. Do you have a son in there? No, it must be a mistake. Yeah, this was written in 1981. 1981? Oh, I have recent reviews, too. What, like 1984? No, 1991. Uh, 1991? Anyway, yeah. if the food was that good back in 1981, how is it today? I think it's better now. That's great news. Yeah. I have a following for 30 years, and what I do, I am the best there is. But there's some things that can be changed. Youthful 22-year-old. I don't like the website. Uh, who else is running the restaurant? My brother, uh, Antonio. Wow, Tony. that's encouraging. Very encouraging, in terms of a proper family-run restaurant. I have my wife, Tony, wow. and uh, okay, great. My, my children. Let's have a little catch-up with the family, shall we? OK. Yeah, are they all here? Yeah, they're all here. Love they're to meet them. Bring them out. Someplace. This is my lovely wife, Grace. Hi, nice to meet you. My wife's good to see you too. Where are you from? Italy. This is your wife? This yes. Is... Wow, you did well. And this is? Domenica, the daughter. OK, wonderful. And this is? My I'm Linda. My brother's wife. That's my husband, Antonio. Antonio. How are you? Yeah, very good, Dan. Uh, Pleasure Tony, to meet Tony, you. what would you like to be called? I go by Tony. Tony, OK, Thank great. Uh, let's sit down and let's have a catch up, shall we? I'm glad that Chef Ramsey is here to help us because uh, this is a family restaurant and we shouldn't be a split family restaurant. First of all, I'm here to help. And I can't help unless I know what's with wrong. What's wrong with the restaurant? We had a, a phenomenal leader, and the leader was my father. He was in the front. Him and I were always on the same page. And where's your father now? Where is He's he? In Italy, retired. So no one's actually ever stepped into your father's shoes. Well, I have, but I think what has happened is no one has any uh, idea what is needed in this restaurant. We're in a position to lose everything. So who runs it now? I'm the, I'm the guy in charge right now. Well, no, You're... On, on the way we run it is on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, I run the place. And then on uh, Thursday nights through Sunday nights, uh, they run the place. Wow, it's crazy. How does a family restaurant not run as a family? They don't get along. Because you don't belong in this restaurant. It's a trauma. Yeah. When you have laziness, it's an infection. What happens is when Tony is here and Linda is here, they have no understanding that number one is the customer. No sitting around. No looking at the TV. Watching TV when customers come? Is that true? I don't, I don't think it's true. Tony, he don't care about the customer. He was sitting and played the computer. I care about this restaurant. No, I don't think so. He had the computer here. He talked with the computer. Come on. Complaints are that people feel neglected. Yeah, but there's also complaints like, I don't want to come there when she's there. Customers don't want to come when you're working. What's all that about? I don't know. It's I mean, a... I'm just asking her. Listen, I'm... I... She's got people that she kisses ass to and they love her. She's got other people that she gets bl blunt in her face and hate her. Is it right to just basically go up to the customer and just say, just fuck not... you, get the fuck out of here? No! I just said that! I just said fuck you! Don't tell me this about shit, OK? Say that to no, I don't you. This is what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did right. What did you do wrong? 
I'm just trying to figure out what happened. I mean, I, I wasn't here. Did she say fuck you? Did she not say fuck you? I thought what? she did. No, I didn't hear fuck you, no. Oh, yeah, she did. What, not. what did you hear? I didn't say that. I said that to you. You no, forget. No, she got what into What do you got to forget for? You got to be honest. I'm being you honest. Do I just got to help you or not? I'm trying to get him to well, help Well, then say the way it is. I am. No, you're not. You're lying. I'm not lying. You guys yeah, are lying. Said, I think she fucked you. You think? Oh, she did. Okay, she did what? say fuck well, you. Well, then you fucking wrong. That's all. We are losing the business. You understand? Because I see, this is why we don't get along. Within minutes of meeting the family, Chef Ramsay got a quick sample of one of the restaurant's biggest problems. We are losing the business. You understand? Because I hate. So you see, this is why we don't get along. Follow me. Thank you. You're welcome. Now he's hoping that the food of Luigi's is as good as Luigi says it is. Uh, wow. I'm gonna have a good look at the menu. The menu's huge, right? The menu is huge. The last I counted, there was 126 things on there. <sighs> okay, great. Right, let's start off with, oh, fried ravioli. Love them. Okay. Do you know what? What about the linguine escatori? Okay. What is the catch of the day? That's uh, mahi mahi. Let's do that. Absolutely. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm. Decor's hideous. Is stuck in a time warp. Takes me back to 1981. Okay, I have a fried ravioli for Chef Ramsay. Fried ravioli for the chef. My food is the best food that's possibly made. But the problem with the restaurant is that we're fighting so much. Fried ravioli. Okay. Fried ravioli. What's inside the ravioli, please? Uh, it's a five cheese stuffed ravioli. And the five cheeses are? Uh, I'm not sure. Well, wow. It's a pre-made ravioli. So not homemade? They're, those are not homemade. If we don't even make them here, it'd be nice to know what's inside them. I'll find out right now for you. Thank you. How's it going? I need to find out what cheeses are in the ravioli. What cheeses are in the ravioli? Yeah. yeah. What kind of cheese is in the bread and ravioli? Read the box. It's a ricotta cheese, Joe. It's a ricotta cheese. Oh, my God. Ah. Horrible. Something deep, fried, frozen. Doesn't even taste like cheese. Jesus, no. You got whole uh, whey, and you got American grana. And uh, a skim cheese. Yeah. OK, perfect. You got it? Thank you, yes. Yeah, not good. Chef Ramsey, I checked on the cheeses for you. Uh, mascarpone. Mascarpone. Ricotta. Ricotta. Uh, also, uh, American grana. Something called a cheese way and culture blend. Where the fuck is that from in Italy? I don't. I have no idea where that's from. Ooh. And a uh, skimmed cheese. Skimmed cheese in a fried ravioli. What does that mean? It's fat-free cheese dipped in fat. Dipped in fat, yeah. OK, thank you. OK. Skimmed cheese in a fried ravioli. Oh. Some pans. Yeah, it looks good. Hey, uh, Joe. My, my. Here, I'll yeah. bring it out, tell him. Oh, damn. Oh, chef, this is the fish special. It's the mahi mahi. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm. Mm, this mush. Bland, greasy, no seasoning. Fish is dreadful. Um, this is a special fish. Yes, that is a special fish. Mm -hmm. It'll taste fine. It tastes like mush. Almost like it's sort of old. The food just isn't the way it used to be. With all the fighting going on, the standards and the quality, everything, it tanked. And that's special. Holy crap. OK. Uh, he said that this one right here, where the fish was just dreadful. It's all right. I'm still hungry anyway. I absolutely think he's wrong about the Mahi Mahi. And I thought it was perfectly fine. It was just the way it's supposed to be. That's from the mouth of a chef that knows know, taste probably know. more, OK? That guy's up here, and I'm down here. What do I know if he cooks it good or not? I don't know. It's his opinion. I don't, I don't want you to know. feel bad, because you... I don't feel bad. Right. I know. I'm right, waiting fine. for his opinion. What the hell? Chef Ramsey is here to help us. And my brother takes this attitude that it's all bullshit complaints. It's not. You got to listen to those complaints and keep your mouth shut. So everything is atrocious, Chef. Are you tasting the food? 
Yeah, I you are, yeah? The fish was cooked uh, properly, it was fresh. Yeah, so it's mush. It tastes excellent to me. Okay, let me finish this. Right, Thank yeah. you. Thank you. I don't need a guy to tell me that my food sucks. If you don't like the food, then get the fuck out of here. The linguine pescatori. Yeah, what the hell is that? What have done to the calamari? What have done to these bits? More tentacles here than there are in SeaWorld. That tastes as bad as it looks. Muscles of the clams were grainy and calamari had a weird texture to it. Chef, how are you doing with the pescatori? I'm struggling. Struggling? I'm struggling, yeah. I mean, I certainly don't get that taste of Italy, let me tell you that. And the sauce no. is so weak and it tastes disgusting. Um, are we done? Yes. You can't make everyone happy in life. That's why we need a help. Do this shit. I don't kiss anybody's ass. Take me into the kitchen. I haven't had anyone come into my restaurant and say, Luigi, you don't know what the hell you're doing. Not even Chef Ramsay gets to do that. I'm frustrated. I wish I could say that was an enjoyable lunch. The deep fried ravioli with skinny cheese. Why'd you put that shit on the menu? To give it to the Americans. Come on. Come no, on, I'm, I'm not laughing now. The fish special, that was overcooked and it was bland. That was a, that was a perfect day. You're not telling me that. Come on. It was like cat food. Linguini. Pescatore. That one there is the best dish on the menu. It was my signature dish when I opened the restaurant. I'll stick by my food. I've been sticking for, for 30 years. I have no problem. Yeah, that's the problem there. You've been doing the exact same food for 30 years. I haven't had a challenge in 30 years. No one's ever challenged me. You're the first one. Listen, you've lost your sparkle. I don't believe this is the same man that was the young maestro that was written about 30 years ago. Come on. There's something missing. I don't know what it is on the back of the fragmented relationship you've got with your brother, but the heart's gone. There's got to be some magic somewhere inside that was once there, but I need it back. He can't tell me that I don't know what the hell I'm doing in my kitchen. I've been doing it for 30 years. After being truly disappointed with Luigi's dishes and his attitude at lunch, okay, Chef good. Ramsay is hoping right. to see something positive during dinner service. Well, welcome to Luigi's. What can I get for you? I want to have the ravioli, the fettuccine della cotta. I'll be right back. Get your appetizer started, OK? Uh, where's Tony? Give me your number so we play some golf. Yeah, I'm, I'm playing. Uh... Maybe Saturday morning, yeah. Tony is more like easygoing. Not take it serious as the business job. There's only seven years between you and Luigi. How come you haven't got gray hair and he's got all the gray hair? I try to relax more. He's a stressful guy. He see what happens. But you don't look like a guy that carries pressure. I try not to. That's a major family problem. You have to change. Penne solo penne with sausages. I'm going to show Chef Rams that my kitchen runs like a machine, like a smooth machine. And the food is just coming. A thousand mile an hour. Not one chef has tasted anything. The food always gets thrown out like that? Uh, the kitchen really pumps food, yeah. They're, they're fast. Fast but dangerous. While food may be going up to diners with lightning speed. The sauce is kind of watery. What's wrong with that? They said he doesn't like the sauce on the gnocchi. It's also Thank coming you. back just as quickly. Oh, no. What's wrong with that now? They didn't like the flavor of the meatballs. They're solid. Do you know what I mean? and dry as fuck. And Luigi is not taking the returns very well. The lady uh, wanted the gnocchis to be more like fluffy, like light. Lighter than that, I mean, why don't we put feathers on them? We've been making gnocchis for 30 years, that's the way it is. Oh my god, it's getting worse. I'm falling asleep, I don't have any garlic, I don't have any mushrooms. Luigi back in the kitchen, it's kind of scary, because we never know if he's going to snap and yell at us for something. But why the fuck is you got to answer back and you don't get the mushrooms, that's all, like I told you. Okay, put them over there. That's it. That's all you got to do is put the fucking job over there because they do the work. That's OK. Everything OK. No worry about it. No worry about it. Nothing happened. Wow. Customers pay extra for that? You work before two people and you make it. You can't make it now with three. Just let it go. Matcha. Oh, no. What's wrong with that now? Uh, they said too chewy. Too chewy. Too chewy. Good. Yeah. Nobody takes anything before it goes out? I didn't say this one. One complaint screws up my whole kitchen. It slows everything down. That's the way it is. One. Can I have all the complaints at one time? What's wrong with you? What, what, oh, I, what, what, what I'm complaints? I'm a chef. You know better than me. If you're the, a chef, yeah, I what disrupts your kitchen most of all? Sure. What does? The 
The arrogance. I complain. The arrogance. I complain, but it's not true. Arrogance of the oh, chef. Yes, the and pasta arrogant. Was... You're an arrogant chef just like me. Worse than me. Why are you shouting at me? I'm not shouting at you. You're not shouting That's at me, right, then you're not. a little bit crazy. I'm a little crazy. Because you are shouting. I'm always crazy. Why don't you come here and tell me how it's done, chef? You do it. No, you know better than me. It's just halfway into dinner service. Why don't you come here and tell me how it's done, chef? You do it. No, you know better than me. But after a series of complaints, Luigi has had enough. That's it? No, he's not gone. He's gone. Well, he's walked off the line. He's not gone. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go back and find okay. him. And you got to understand what he's trying to do here, man. He, he's, he, he's not. The guy is what he is, and he's a fucking asshole English bastard is what he is, all right? Yeah. But he's being honest with us. He's not being honest with us. It's yeah, he is. No, it's not a bunch yeah, of bullshit, yeah, man. Yeah. This restaurant, is, it's both our restaurants, so I want to patch things up. I want to get along with him. He's my brother. I, I want the best for him. I think you got to go back in there and finish this fucking night off, man. And don't have no, don't back down from the motherfucker, man. I'm not backing down. I'm just taking but don't, a break. Don't, all right, you're just I'm taking, taking a break. break. I'm too hot. All right. Underneath. The best Italian food west of Italy? Yeah. It's still the best food west of Italy. You put your food against mine anytime you want. Really? I have worked with more chefs than you can imagine in the past. The way you perform tonight did not tell me that is the man that's in control of his kitchen. And when I come out and read that shit, I'm pissed off for you and your customers. It's 2011. Unfortunately, Luigi, no one's fucking told you. That's my opinion of tonight's service. Well, what the fuck are we supposed to do, man? Yeah, bro, I got say, I need your help. I need, we, we, we should, we should help wake up. You know, wake get up. The... There's something quite remarkable about how hard you work. But I want you working fucking smarter, not harder. When you come down and come back to 2011, you've got me. World famous Italian family restaurant. Fuck me. After discovering how dysfunctional Luigi's really is. Good morning. Good morning, Chef. How are you? Good. Good. Chef Ramsey yeah, brother, knows the brothers you? and their wives need a wake up call. And he knows okay. just how to do that. So, when was the last time you had a meeting? Well, a meeting with all the staff. Never. Five years? Never. Never, never. 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 No. Wow. Four of you need one voice put across to all of your staff. Come through to the kitchen. Come with me. I want you to watch something very, very interesting. Just stay here. I'll see you in a minute. Thank you. Wow. Ever. Morning. Come in, come in, come in. Good morning. Take a, uh, take a seat, please. OK. I asked you here this morning because I've never seen a restaurant operate the way this one does. And I can't start to fix anything unless I know what the problems are. I'm just going to be honest. When you go back to the, to the kitchen and tell Tony Garcia Lau, yeah. or Luigi or whoever, the client is complaining about this, you get a big fight. If the people tell you they don't like it, you can't have Luigi. What do you mean they don't like it? What's wrong with it? Sorry, I know it's your food, your recipe, and that must be kind of tough to like take criticism, but you're gonna have to like bend your will a little bit to what the customer yeah. wants. Somebody needs to taste the food before it comes out. We should be checking the, the quality of the food in the bag two years ago, three years ago. It's been declining in your mind for yes, the last two years. absolutely. I get stressed out when I come to work. Why? It's just the atmosphere, the complete vibe that we get, the disorganization that we have. There's no structure, there's That's no... Right. It comes from the top. There's a top. 
We're not organized at all. How fragmented is it? It's just like Grace and Luigi versus my mom and Tony. It's very separate. The conflict with these two families, the clients can feel it. And who wants to go to a place where the atmosphere is not the most pleasant? So the conflict with the family is spilling into the dining room? Yes, sir. Do, do you agree? Absolutely. The yelling and screaming. And who's yelling primarily? Who is it? Easily, I think the biggest yeller is Grace. I never know if I'm going to walk in and she's going to be smiling or someone else will frown on her face and start yelling at completely She's very unpredictable. Head. Very unpredictable, right. yeah. Can I get out of here? I don't want to hear this. They're, they're saying what they say, and you have to let other people talk. Who's going to lie She gets, like, really mad and starts telling you things that, first of all, they're embarrassing for our customers, and second of all, they're not professional. That's destroying everyone's confidence. I feel this big. This well, is all about lie. all a lie, 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 oh, lie. There's lie, a lot lie. of things that are not said. I know you get offended, but that's okay. It wasn't that true, Linda. Well, look what she said. Has anyone sat down and spoke to her? I'm just afraid to say anything to her because I don't know if she's going to yell at me. Could she not take criticism? No. She can't take criticism. No, she can't. Nothing. No, no criticism whatsoever. Come she on. Said, this is all they have to say. Well, I don't want to hear anymore. And if she does change her mind, she'll say that she didn't change it, that she's always thought that. It's crazy. OK. Uh, just stay here for a second. One moment, right. please. I don't care anymore. I don't, I don't care about the restaurants. I feel like everybody gets to me. They talk nice in front of you, they step into your back. Well, I'm gonna work here. I wanna just quit. I don't, I don't think I wanna be here anymore. I feel so bad. What's the matter? Nothing. Talk to me. No, I can't talk. I just want to quit. That's it. I want to leave. I don't want to be no, all in this no, restaurant. No, no, no. No, I get no. people talking bad about me. No, I can take care of everything. All the care of mine is more than the restaurant. I work here. Grace. It's, I yell Grace. 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 No, Grace. I just, no, 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 I can't me. take it anymore. Please. I can't take it anymore. Grace. 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 Listen to me. Listen to me. I can't take it anymore. Jeff Ramsey has arranged a way for the owners to hear how the staff feels about their behavior. I just want to quit. That's it. I want to leave. I don't want to be no, all this no, restaurant. No, no, no. And it's all too much for Grace to handle. I can't take anymore. I can't take anymore. Grace, 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 listen to me. Listen to me. Grace, I'm sorry. Grace, <laughs> they are here for you. No, they yes, get they, to me. No, they talk about me. No, yeah, that's not no. true. They're liars. No. no, no. Grace, that is the feeling of your team, and they are here for you, and you have to listen to them. We cannot start to fix this restaurant unless we fix each other first. So I'm sorry you feel it's upset, but that's the first time you've seen the way you affect them. But let's just stay calm and let's go and have a meeting together and talk as a family. Okay. Okay? Uh, thank you. Let's go. I think Grace needed to hear all these criticisms. She still is a little bit in denial of the way that she is and how it intimidates other people. I think eventually she will come through, but uh, it's going to be hard for her. You take a seat, just a big deep breath. The owners were listening. The minute I walked in here, I could feel the level of intensity. It was, it, it was depressing. Nobody was being honest with each other. And if we continue to fall along these lines and remain broken, this restaurant is going to close. And whether you like it or not, you're all tied together. And if we can't work and communicate together as a family, then you shouldn't be in business. Because it's unfair. It's unfair. One thing we are going to do from this day on is work together. Can everyone agree on that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Good. Past is past, OK? See, look, that smile. I was kind of already almost to give up. I know the truth hurts. I know it can help us. I know it can get better. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. After an emotional breakthrough as a result of the staff meeting, after you. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Chef Ramsay has an idea on how to get the family working together again. When you think of Italy, you think of spicy sausage. Yes. Yes. When was the last time we made a spicy sausage? When I was a younger girl, yeah. Uh, you used to make sausage with your parents? Uh, oh, yeah. Always. Oh, really? I was 10 years old when I started to make a sausage with my parents. Whereabouts in Calabria? Calabria. I feel like I'm, I'm back a young girl. <laughs> Okay, so tonight we'll make a brand new, delicious Luigi sausage. And I'll start off slowly grinding. How big do you like your sausage? <laughs> I think I don't know, like a dog, what? Mm, they're making me hungry. My job was to stuff the sausage. I love it. <laughs> and you know, in Italy, the sausage brings the family together. It's a nice feeling, right? Yeah. yeah. So when was the last time we all spent time in the kitchen together? When was that? Never. Never. All of our body. Wow. This piece that we are trying to get to right now is long overdue. When my father was here, we were a happy, happy place. It's been too many years and too many frustrations going on. I want you two, brother-in-law, sister-in-law, to make the rest of them. Luigi and I are going to go and cook, OK? All right. Nice. Just to see, like, Tony and, uh, and Grace working together, making sausage, give me a little bit of hope. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> Making me feel younger. It's very fun. Okay. Sausage is in. For the sauce, I'm gonna make it like some nice, sort of rich ragu. Mm. Fresh. Fresh like you, huh, Chef? Oh, yes. Working next to Chef Ramsay is a great, great, great opportunity. The way that he works and the passion that he has, it makes me, uh, me a light of fire and say, why can I do that? Like I used to think in the old days. I would love to be in the kitchen here when you were 22, you know that? Yeah, it would have been fun. Can you imagine? And I started to realize I still have the passion. Right, are you ready? I'm ready. You're done. Out of 21st century. Let's have a little taste. Simple, fresh, Italian fare. Jump in. Oh, man, that's awesome. Me and Grace worked hard on those sausages. I, I feel as though it's just a first little baby step, and I can do better. I, I want to do better. Good job, my gosh, unbelievable. They're very good at it. Oh my gosh, too good. Now that Chef Ramsay has seen a glimmer of hope with the family working together, Luigi, we are relaunching this restaurant tomorrow. He has one more surprise in store to make sure Tony and Luigi stay united. I want all of you right now to watch something. Listen. Good night. How was that Luigi Tony? It's a day, you father. It's been five years since I've seen my father. I miss him. I love him. I wish I was close to him. I want a boat to you to remember. I'm part of the world to raise you a boat and to bring you that's your business. Don't forget that beautiful time that we have together. Hard work, but we got a good, good time. Please, who is your Tony? Love each other and work together like me. And God bless everybody. Remind me of the past, remind me of where we came from and how we started and why we started this kind of business, you know, why we were in it. It puts it back in perspective. Well, we gotta dig deep and we make this place to do what it needs to go do. Whatever it takes. We'll start tomorrow. Tomorrow you'll see a new Luigi. I guarantee it. After arranging for an emotional message from Luigi and Tony's father, Chef Ramsay and his team worked through the night to bring a little piece of Italy to Luigi's. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today, we start off with a new attitude, a new restaurant, and a new beginning. Are you ready to see the new Luigi's? Yes. yes. 
On the count of three. One, two, three. Welcome to the new Luigi's. No, no way. Oh, what are you doing? Wow. Oh, my gosh. Everything has been themed as if we're on this amazing trip to Italy. It's appealing, it's vibrant, and it's got that rustic Italian charm. Beautiful. Gone is the clutter. Gone are those horrible booths. Now we have this wonderful, nice, family-style bonquet seating. Look at the tables. Underneath, we've got the Luigi's stamp of approval. Beautiful. Oh Even the napkins have got your stamp on there. Grace, what do you think? Unbelievable, unbelievable. Wow. I remember now how it was with my dad and how hard we worked to get this restaurant started. Luigi, you're going quiet. I get nervous when you're quiet. No, I'm very, very happy. Yeah, you're... <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Listen, I hope you're that you are re-energized. You are the best. Come on, you're and the best. Oops. Oh, I didn't know you covered them. I didn't know you gave them out. I know. You're the best. This is just a dream. I'm dreaming. I'm asleep. It's unbelievable. It's a new Luigi's. I'm going to need to give another hug. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You happy? Yeah. Yeah. OK, good. Make it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After giving the restaurant a much-needed makeover, Chef Ramsay has also given the menu a dramatic makeover as well. Welcome to the new menu. It's fresh, it's seasonal, and it's exciting. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Wow, yeah. What have we done? We simplified it and made it manageable and delicious. OK, let's start off with the appetizer, a lovely bowl of seasonal minestrone with a fresh pesto pasta dishes down the bottom, yes? Linguine al clam. Delicious. And then finally, baked salmon for a light take on supper. When do we can start to eat? Let me finish, please. I'm sorry. Is she always like this? Always. No, no, I'm a kid, I'm a kid. I was joking. One thing you do deserve, Luigi, yeah, <laughs> is a medal for being married to Grace. <laughs> <laughs> OK, get some knife and forks, jump in, get tasting. Mangiare, mangiare. Oh, wow. It's really good. Mm. So good. Short rib is awesome. Short ribs are good. It reminds me of something mom used to make. The new menu is amazing. I love it. I think this is a slice of authentic Italy in Anaheim. Lasagna is excellent. Really good. We have the restaurant that looks like a modern place. We have a new menu. Everybody is smiling. Everybody's happy again. I really feel fantastic. Everything is excellent. I'll be proud to serve this food. Welcome to the new Luigi's. It's relaunch night at Luigi's. We are serving the new menu. So would you like to start off with the appetizers? Calamari. Can we try calamari? And for the first time in a long time, there's positive energy in the You're restaurant. Welcome. Luigi cooks. Tony, new expedite. Right, 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 chef. Let's get those first orders in, please. I don't want Luigi panicking. I'm going to get spaghetti and meatballs. We'll need sausage. I want the calamari. I'll get them. Here we go. So, order in. First one. Ordering one order fried calamari, one linguine pescatora. Chef Ramsay has lit up another fire within me that it's going to burn for a long time. Okay, let's go, let's go, guys. Luigi, lovely. Much better like that. Pescatora. Order up. Calamari? Bruschetta. So good. With Luigi producing stunning dishes in the kitchen, diners are thrilled with Chef Ramsay's new menu. That's delicious. And the kitchen is having no trouble keeping up with the demand. Pescatora, pescatora. Oh, they got to pick up, pick up. Where's Tony? Tony. 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 All right, be right there. Look at this fucking food. Food in the city here forever. Let's go. While food is getting to the hot plate in a timely manner, I don't know where any of this food goes. Tony and Luigi have stopped coordinating. And the log jam in the kitchen is not sitting well with diners. Where's Tony? I need my brother to come in and give me some help. I get frustrated and I get mad. I want to kill the guy. Tony, what's going on? Let's go, let's pick up the pace. It's relaunch night, and while the kitchen continues to produce food... Tony, what's going on? Let's pick up the pace. All right, be right there. A lack of communication between the brothers has resulted in food sitting on the pass and not at diners' tables. Getting cold. Tony, service, please. Let's go. 
Luigi, you have to keep this together. If you start screaming, I'll kick you out. If I lose my crew again in front of the customers, it's definitely going to cost my business. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. I got to learn to take a deep breath and get it back together. Tony, look at me. Look at, look at me now. We're producing unique food, and it's dying. He's cooking. You can't stand there like a lemon. You've got to help him a little bit. We can't cook like this and let the food die in the window. I need you expediting. Talk to each other. Start pushing the food out. Let's go. I'm going to need a fried calamari on that one. What what calamari? calamari? Hey, Domenica, Domenica, take this to right here table 41. Now, it sounds like a kitchen. We've got some voices in there. I, I still need one more pescatore. With Tony now concentrating on expediting. What else we got? Baked salmon and a chicken parm. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Luigi is free to focus on the quality and the consistency of the food. All right, bon appetit. Enjoy. He made it for you. Thank you, thank you. We have a fettuccine Alfredo. And diners are once again enjoying Luigi's. That is really good. It is good. Okay, sure, okay. Thank you, Chef. We're finally leaving the negativity and the fighting behind us. Good things will come with a good attitude. This first step is great. Is that the last song take on? Yes, sir. Okay. Tonight we took a baby step forward in the right direction. Slow start, but the customers were happy. And yes, we were. A little bit like headless chickens, but you showed you had passion. Yes? yes. yes. Passion is back in Luigi's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> two brothers, step forward. Look at you two. Honestly, that's exactly what I want to see. You've made the critical first step, but stay on it. Stay on that path. Having Chef bring us together is something special. The brothers need to be bonded. I think my father would be very proud. Love is back and Luigi's. Stay together. You make him look good, and you make him look good. Thank you very much, Chef Ramsey. You're the prince in white shining armor. You walked into our place, and you gave us hope and courage again. Let's go ahead to the chef. Thank you, Chef. Thank you very much. No screaming. No screaming, OK? Stay on it. Wow, I have never, in all the years of Kitchen Nightmares, seen a more explosive family situation than here at Luigi's. They were so busy fighting each other, the reputation of the restaurant went completely downhill. This week, we moved them forward 30 years. But unless this family stays united, Luigi's has no chance, and I mean no chance, of success. In the weeks that followed, Luigi's received a rave review from the OC Weekly. The revamped dining room was slammed. All sorts of delights passed us by. Yeah, this is fantastic. And the restaurant is regaining the reputation it once held in the community. That smells really good. There, yeah, you got, you got work in you. <laughs> wow, that's Luigi. And unbelievably... Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. The family is working together in harmony. Beautiful sauce, beautiful. Chef Ramsay has brought the family together again, and my father in Italy is going to be proud of us. us. We put all our differences aside, and I think we're going to build a new bright future for all of us. 